Robots are the new black. That sounds ironic. After all, we know that nothing is ever really the new black except for black. Everything else, it's a fad. It's marketing. But there's no doubt that hardware and robots are hot right now. After all, you're at solid. And we've all heard that hardware is the new software. Ever since Kiva Systems was acquired by Amazon in early 2012 for a hefty $775 million, we've seen increasing investment in robotics. And the insertion of hardware into the startup world of accelerators and funds. In 2012, the first two hardware accelerators opened, Hexcelerator and Lemnos Labs. And the first funds for robotics were announced by both Grishin Robotics and Revolution Capital in France. However, Rodney Brooks was ahead of the times, as always. In the year 2000, Rodney Brooks launched Robotic Ventures with investments in companies like Mako Surgical. 2013 saw six more robotics and hardware accelerators open. The walls of the software world are crumbling. Paul Graham from Y Combinator, the most famous of software accelerators, announced the hardware renaissance. And already in 2014, we've seen nine or 10 more robotics and hardware accelerators open, with more in the pipeline. 2014 also saw the launch of RoboStocks, the first publicly traded, the first robotics stock index and ETF or exchange traded fund, which has 77 publicly listed robotics companies. These companies have market values between 200 million and 125 billion dollars. That's a median value of two to three billion dollars. It sounds impressive, but that's misleading because many of these are companies like ABB and Foxconn, like Bosch and Boeing, where they do a lot more than what we consider to be robotics. Robotics is still emerging from the industrial automation of the 80s. Industrial robotics is still the dominant paradigm for now. There are two and a half million industrial robots deployed globally with a market value of $30 billion. But the market is comparatively saturated. The real growth area is professional service robots, which combine a high unit cost with high projected growth. Professional service robots are surgical, health, agricultural, logistics robots. Personal robots, on the other hand, are appliances, they're toys, they're educational. Their unit cost typically is around $200. To overtake the projected growth, the projected market value of service robotics, personal robotics has to sell billions of units. But what is the world's most popular robot? iRobot has shipped more than 10 million household robots, making the Roomba the most widely deployed robot in the world. So where is our next household robot? As robotics leaves the closed factory floor and enters our lives, are we actually making the sorts of robots that people want to buy? For too long, robotics has been a technology without a cause, over-promising and under-delivering. Perhaps we've been building robots, not services. Kiva Systems removed the robot altogether and focused on the magic. What if they just made it work? like magic. All those robots are just the delivery mechanism. In 2006, South Korea announced the grand vision 
of a robot in every home by the year 2020. A humanoid robot. Perhaps the best robots don't need to be called robots, because they just do what we need. They're invisible. They're appliances. In fact, by the year 2020, your household robot will be your house. Not the humanoid robot promised by science fiction, or for that matter, by South Korea. We live in interesting times. We are surrounded by robots we don't see, while we're still waiting for the robots we imagine. And who amongst us are the early adopters of the robot revolution? The queens of the quantified self movement. The fastest growing market sector for robots is the milking machine. We now have fully automated dairy farms where it's possible for cows to milk and feed themselves 24-7. Now, few of us realize that robots are transforming the way we think of work, or indeed of the human-machine interface. We think we're telling machines what to do. In the broadest sense, we still are. But we're also frequently out of the loop or being told what to do by machines. At a robotic dairy farm, it's possible for cows to move from pasture to pasture, from pasture to milking, from milking to food, even back scratches, all without human intervention. And along the way, an incredible amount of individual data is being collected. Temperatures, milk yield, frequency of milking, levels of bacteria, symptoms of mastitis, of illness. Individual cows can be separated, given extra supplements. And all this data goes directly to the farmer's computer. Farming used to be a science of averages, and now it's truly becoming precision agriculture. And most importantly, cows like it. Cows on dairy farms are happy cows on robot farms, happy cows with fewer illnesses, higher milk yields, and lower stress levels. It's wonderful, but how much are we designing our technologies, and how much are they defining us? No sooner do we learn to speak than we learn a whole array of gestures and interactions that initiate conversations, games, food, money. And we continue, some of us, to learn many strange new languages, Python, Java, Ruby, Ross, programming languages, as if we are completely in control. But machines learn the human API. And as our systems become complex, our role, our negotiated role in them, becomes more like a mechanical Turk. We are performing mundane scut work. We are crowdsourced and captured into performing menial, robotic labor for candy and fleeting rewards. And companies like Facebook and the SaaS providers spend billions of dollars trying to predict and control our behaviors. How will this translate into hardware as our world becomes increasingly smart and connected devices? Just like cows, we quickly adopt new behaviors to adapt to our machines. When I called robots the new black, I realized it wasn't really a joke. Black is the dominant paradigm. Black is the norm. And increasingly, robots are the new black. As automation and smart connected devices go everywhere. Yesterday, we finished the first global startup competition for robotics, and we had robots from all over the world in every sort of vertical, including humanoids. And you can see some of the top startups at the Silicon Valley Robotics booth. Our world's changing. Are we changing too? Thank you. <laughs>